Our scripture this morning is going to come out of Acts chapter 9, verses 20 to 31. Actually, we'll be stepping like half a verse back into 19, the way it, the way it reads. Um, we're continuing our series with Paul. Now, that being said, I'm not going to get all the way through it today. I've already, I already know that, so I'm sorry. We're going to split it into two again this week, so I just couldn't get it all in there. So we're going to start in Acts chapter 9 this morning. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't it he who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. Then he came to Jerusalem. He tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had been, had seen the Lord, and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the saints like Paul who we study here, Lord. That we can have that example, that, that living example of what you've done in the lives of these men and women in here, Lord. And we just we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you. For dads today, Lord, and the example we have in here that can make us better fathers, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. We just pray you'd be with each and everyone here today, Lord, as we go through these scriptures, as we study the life of Paul. Help hearts to be softened, Lord. Help us to hear the message you have for each one of us. And Lord, I ask that you would help me to speak clearly and boldly as always. I thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. What a few weeks it's been. I have enjoyed this series on Paul. There's, it's, the hardest part is deciding, okay, what, what part are we going to do next? Because there's a lot in there. So that's been my hardest part, but I have enjoyed it. Now we started where we first saw him in the Bible, where he first appears. And at that point in his life, he's not really a very good individual. He's not really doing some very good things. But in his eyes, as we've talked about, he was doing no wrong in his eyes. He was convinced that he was on the right path. He was doing a good thing for God. That, that's what he believed. But in truth, what he was doing was dealing out unbridled persecution against those early Christians. We saw how he supervised and approved of the execution of Stephen, a faithful early prophet. And then how, how he sought permission and authority to arrest anyone he, he could catch worshiping Jesus, or claiming to believe in Jesus Christ. He was a force to be reckoned with in these days, but a force for evil, not a force for good. And then we saw how the Lord himself intervened with Saul, how he confronted him about the persecution both against, against Jesus himself and against his believers, because if you're persecuting the believers of Christ, you're persecuting Jesus. And when we saw the transformation that took place when that happened, upon Saul realizing that Jesus was exactly who he said he was, and upon realizing what indeed he had been doing to him and to his followers. Now some of you might wonder today, as, as many do at times, why would God allow such things to take place? Why allow Paul to do these horrible things that make people got hurt? And, and that's a fair question. But let me ask, let me ask you this. Would Paul have been as effective if he had grown up never really doing anything wrong or living quiet, quietly coming to know Jesus Christ through his studies and 
just kind of went on about his life. Would he have reached all the people that he did? The answer is no. The Lord had a magnificent purpose for him. And this is what it was going to take. Now, that's not to say that quietly building a relationship with Jesus Christ is a bad thing. It's a really good thing. If you're fortunate enough to, if that's been your experience, that's wonderful. For some of us here, it hasn't. Some of us can relate to the Paul side of things, or Saul side, I should say. We can relate. We, we remember when we were that. But for Paul, and as for many of them, it hasn't been that smooth ride. God had a plan for him. He had a plan for each of you as well. And he knew that if he was going to use Saul in the future, he had to do something that would have a dramatic impact, that would get people's attention. He had to do something nobody was going to expect. And that's one thing I've learned in the last four or five years. Expect the unexpected from the Lord. We're not always going to know what his plan is. He's going to surprise us. The way we see him, the way we see Saul, in his life before and after conversion. That should resonate with a lot of us. Maybe not all of us, but an awful lot of us. The more I read about him, the, the more I resonate with, with Saul and then Paul as, as, it, as the transformation took place. So today, we're going to continue that. We're going to continue to follow him as he tries to become a disciple of Christ, as he tries to, to fit in with it, the other disciples to prove that he is indeed the real deal, he is legit. He's, he's not trying to fool anybody. So let's go and see how that starts. We're going to start in verse 19 and 20 from this morning. And if you have your Bibles open, follow along with me. It says, Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus was the Son of God. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus was the Son of God. If you're following your Bibles, if you if you're taking notes, write, write this in the margins next to verse 20, right? He was telling everyone. Once Saul believed and was baptized, he made it an immediate priority to share that. To share that good news, to tell everybody what happened. To tell everybody that he was the Son of God, that he was the Messiah. And that's a big deal because for those that knew him, that's a 180 degree turn from where he was not very long ago. That was a big deal. And he knew it. And he wanted everybody to know who was responsible for that. Now, as I said earlier, think about, think about these scriptures and the accounts of Saul. And weigh them against where you're at in your life. Where, where, where you're at right now in your relationship with the Lord. Or if you're, if you're just budding in that relationship or you've been in there for years. Now, I know some of you here, hopefully most of you, received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then many of you have experienced this, a huge life change like that. And that's wonderful. Now, now it says that Saul's a well-educated man, and we know he was. We know he had high authority for a time. But does, does that matter in him sharing the gospel? Does it matter in how he present, presents his past? Not really. He doesn't have to, all that is good, and it's a benefit, but, but what really makes him effective is the testimony he now has. Because of that encounter he had with Jesus on the road. Because of what he had done and now what he realizes was wrong. That is what makes him relate to people. That is what makes him convince people that Jesus is who he says he is. That he is the Messiah. So there's no reason for us to share. Because each of us have a testimony as well. And we can do it. You just got to ask yourself a few simple questions and you think, should I be sharing? Should I be doing that? Like, yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? And have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? That's number one. Have you been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and been born again? And have you felt and seen the hand of God on your life and on the life of your family after you've made that decision to follow Jesus? I know a lot of you have. I know some of you right now are experiencing some amazing, amazing things. And that, that's proof right there. That is all you need. If you said yes, then like Saul, that should be an immediate priority, telling others about the love of Jesus Christ, about how that changed your life. You may not realize it, but there might be somebody sitting in the pew across from you or in front of you that needs to hear your story. 
they might relate. And trust me, it's not hard. I did it you know, four or five years. I don't know how long ago it was I stood over there and did mine. It seems scary at first, but it's not bad. You get used to it. You might end up up here. <laughs> but but it, it's, it's not as bad as it seems. And that, that needs to be a priority. We need to share that with people. Now you think, how are people going to react to that? What are they going to say? What are they going to do if I start sharing my story? If I start telling people about Jesus? I mean, it's not something I do every day. Let's look see how what they did with Saul. Verse 21 and 22. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call him this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by providing, by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Notice it said proving. Take your writing utensil, whatever, whatever kind you might be using, and make another note. Right? They won't believe you. There's going to be some that aren't going to believe you. They're going to remember who you were. And it, that's okay. That's okay. Because the Lord working through you is going to, going to prove them otherwise. It's going to show them the difference. Just telling people isn't always, isn't always going to work. We've got to show them. By living, by continuing to living out our faith. And letting Christ work through us. There will be some who won't believe you're a new creation. There will also be those, some will come around, others, they're never going to believe. And that's okay. In these instances, the best thing we can do for those individuals is pray. We may have to give separation between them and us. We may have to say, Lord, I'm giving them to you. You're going to have to work on these individuals. I'm going to keep doing everything you've done me to. But I'm going to keep praying for them. Lord, that you'll soften their hearts. It's not something we can do on our own. We can't force somebody to see the love of Jesus. We can't force somebody to accept him. But we can ask the Lord to work out. It isn't something we do all on our own. Now, with Saul's case, nobody believed him at first. Other than maybe the couple that were right there to, to experience. They knew exactly who he was. They were thinking, I don't, I don't think so. They were focusing on his past. And they had, they had good reason to. In that case, he's a dangerous fellow. Now keep in mind, they didn't know what had taken place. And to hear him saying, now that he's following Jesus, was, was quite a shock. I mean, for all they know, it's a trap. He could be saying, I'm going to get in here and find out who all you followers are, and then, bang, you're going to jail. You know, it, it, it was dangerous for them. For those of you who are new in your faith and, and you, you fear that with your, your former friends, with your family, don't, don't hold that against them. Simply allow them to see God working through you. I've seen that in my life. I have seen family even come to know Jesus Christ. Not because I go and preach to them every week because I know better. With some of them, I can't do that. But I let them watch. That's, so some that's all we can do. We let them see the joy working through us. We let them see how the Lord has indeed changed us. And it's, just, and it's, it's no different for any of us. I've run into individuals that knew me 20 years ago. I think, wow, that's what you're doing? But they knew me then. They don't know me now. That, I'm sure that's true for more than just me. So, but that's okay. They have to see the difference. Verse 22 said, Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by providing the Jesus, by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. He was living proof of the Lord's resurrection, of the Lord's power over all the earth. Those who didn't believe him at first were convinced because they saw the change. They heard testimonies from, from the others that were with him. Now it doesn't say he just told them. It said by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. He did this by, by sharing his testimony, by telling what Jesus had said to him. What he had done for him. He had been healed. I mean, that, that's, that's a really big testimony. Now you might say, well, I have, I have a pretty unique testimony. I, nobody would probably really relate to my testimony. I don't know that I need to share it. I don't know if it helped anybody. Well, Saul's is pretty unique, too. And you think, well, maybe we couldn't relate to him. But we can. Probably more than we think. 
Think about this. Before we knew Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and I know I'm guilty of it, we mocked the Christians. We, we mocked believers. Oh, and they believe in the God they don't even see. They can't see. They don't know Him. They think He talks to them. I'm guilty of that. When I was in high school, all those are the church people. That's it's what happens. Is that not persecution? Yes, we didn't kill anybody. We didn't stone anybody. But it's another form of Think about this. The, the estimated worldly population right now in the world is 7.5 billion people. With a B, billion. That's a lot of people. With that many people in the world, I have no doubt that there is at least one person that can relate to your unique testimony. I'm sure there's more than one. And for all we know, they could be sitting next to us. And if they don't know our story, how do we know if they can relate or not? I'm sure they'd love to hear it. Either way, they may just be waiting for somebody who can say, I know where you're at. I've been there. I, that's exactly what I went through. You know, we don't know if we don't ask, if we don't share. Now, also, like Saul, you may encounter some serious resistance among those who you were associated with. Verses 23 to 25 show us how those who once championed Saul's former cause have a problem with his newfound way of life. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. Now you can't tell me the Bible's boring to read. I mean, that's like an action movie or something like that where somebody wants to kill his man. They're sneaking him out a wall down in a basket I mean, in the middle of the night. But that's what they did for him. And that was the resistance he faced. Now, while I don't see someone wanting to kill you for your faith in this particular area of the country, there are those who, who oppose it pretty vocally. Some may, may want to cut ties with you due to your newfound faith. But notice here where Saul finds protection where he finds people to come around him. It says his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through the opening in the wall. These followers were fellow believers. They, they were with him. They, shared, they, they knew his testimony. They knew he was the real deal. They knew he believed. These protectors, that's you and me. For each, one, for each other here, we look out for each other. We keep each other on the right path. We protect each other from harmful relationships. We... Maybe not from death, but from bad choices. We shore up each other. We keep each other on a straight path. Probably we might have to put up a roadblock for one another once in a while when we start to veer off a little bit. We all have sinful patterns we're prone to, but we need a good group, a good body of believers to keep us all in check. To be able to find friends that can tell us, you know, that's not, that's not the right way to go. That's, that's, that's going to get you in trouble. Even if they won't listen, we... We need a group of people around us that are trusted enough to be able to give us that advice. Those are the kind of friends we have in fellow believers. And Saul had that around him, and they watched out for him. They knew somebody was trying to get him. So they helped him get out of there. They helped him escape from that. In fact, we're going to see it again next week as we go through other scriptures. It's not the only time people are going to try to kill him. But that's where we're at today. As we look through... Becoming, the title today was, was a real disciple. And we're looking at how, how Saul is becoming a real disciple. And he's trying to gain that acceptance in with that group. To let him realize, I, I really did change. I'm not trying, to, not trying to trick you. But I want you to think about that this week as, as we wait to, to finish with it next week. Is that what we're doing? Are, are, are we completely changed? Are we, are we trying to show people that we have changed? Or... Are we letting the Lord do it through us? Are we letting him show people through how he's using us? How we're allowing him to work through us? Saul was able to do miraculous things. He was able, and we're going to see more of that, but the Lord just used him profoundly. And at first that wasn't accepted, but we're going to see that it gets better. It gets better. And that's what I want you to think about this week. Where are we in that, in that transformation from not knowing Christ to being a disciple to, to, to telling other people about it, to sharing our faith, to sharing our testimony with others? 
Because that's what that's where we're headed. That's where the Lord wants us to head. Sometimes, like I said, there's roadblocks, there's we get off track, we do all these things. But that's our final destination. And we're going to look at how, how Saul gets that acceptance, how he gets on that right track, and how he keeps going. So let us stop there this week. And I know we have some special things planned today, so I want to finish up here. So let us pray this morning. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Lord, again, for the example set by, by Paul and so many more in the Bible. Father, we thank you that you allow us to become disciples of yours, that you work through us, that you allow others to see the love of you through us, through how we live, Lord, through how we interact, how we, how we work with others. Lord, we saw in VBS that the, everyone that came together, or we saw it there, that people can work together to do your will, to, to reach others, to sow seeds, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you for that. We thank you for the opportunity to be part of it, Lord, because if you weren't allowing us to do it, it wouldn't take place. Father, we can't do it our own. And we know that. We thank you that, that we have the Holy Spirit to guide us, to work us, to put us on the right path. We thank you for that. Father, I ask that you be with the rest of the service today, Lord, that you would just bless everything that takes place. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.